We've all been there. You die over and over again to a video game boss and their incredible weapon, like a magic sword or an enormous gun, or whatever it is that's going on here. I mean, seems deadly. But then, finally, you are victorious, and in some rare cases, the boss you just vanquished will drop their special weapon for you to use. Only for you to then discover that actually, it's rubbish when you try to use it. What gives? Here are seven incredible boss weapons that were terrible when we got our hands on them. Enjoy, and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. I mean, it's the same gun. Surely it should work as well when I use it. You're, pre you're preaching to the choir here, Andy. Is it because I'm not as good at fighting as the boss? Because that is true. You said it, not me. But, I mean, it's, if, if it's a gun, you just point it at them and pull the trigger. Why is it worse when I do it? No, oh, yeah, it's confidence. <laughs> yeah, I don't the have... Boss has confidence. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm firing it in a non-confident way, is what you're saying. Yes. Oh, that's fair enough. Alas, I am returned. To be granted audience once more. One of the later bosses you'll have to face in From Software's excellent Elden Ring is the first Elden Lord himself, Godric. Nope. God... win? Try again. God... free? There it is. Upon my name as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. And let no one say that I didn't know what was going on when halfway through the fight, Godfrey exploded the lion he was giving a piggyback to, and then, covered in lion blood, announced that he's called Hora Lou now and started doing pro wrestling moves. Because I did. Now I fight as Hora Lou. Anyway, Godfrey the Great is one of the very final bosses you'll encounter in Elden Ring, and as such you'd think his weapon, the Axe of Godfrey, would be a worthwhile thing to have for someone in the hitting people with pointy weapons line of work. The Axe of Godfrey can be obtained by beating Godfrey, no easy task, and then turning in the Remembrance of Hora Lu at the Round Table Hold, at which point this colossal Great Axe becomes yours and you get a look at its stats. And you realise that something is Elden wrong. For a start, it's a colossal weapon, which requires you to have a massive 42 points in strength to be able to wield it, and yet it scales equally with both strength and dexterity. And, without getting too heavily into what weapon scaling is in Elden Ring, both these attributes initially scale at D level, which is as good as it sounds. The weapon's skill also takes an absolute age to use, and considering the immense strength requirement, what a late game weapon it is, and how cool it looks, you'd definitely be expecting something a lot better. If you level up the axe, the strength scaling moves up to C, which is marginally better, but it's still outperformed by any number of other weapons that don't have such a high strength requirement and don't take the best part of 45 minutes to swing. I'm starting to see why he threw it away mid-fight now and switched to suplexes and power bombs. What happened here? Germain's got some kind of weapon. I've never seen its like before. He got away from me. November 2014 saw the release of Assassin's Creed Unity, an appropriate title in that it unified all gamers in horror at how bad it was. After the previous game, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which was all about being a dashing, witty pirate and was the video game equivalent of a month-long vacation in the Caribbean, Assassin's Creed Unity had you living under oppressive rule in the boots of the world's most boring man, Arno. What's the mission? Arno is short for Arno. Do I have to play this again? That's not to say there weren't some positives. The game looked stunningly beautiful, and it also featured four-player co-op, allowing you to each pick a colour of assassin outfit and sprint around the place like a gang of murderous Teletubbies. <laughs> yeah! That's what you get. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Unity also marked the first appearance of a Sword of Eden, for when the spherical alien weapon the Apple of Eden literally won't cut it. In Assassin's Creed Unity, the Sword of Eden is wielded by final boss Francois Thomas Germain, the head of the French Templars, who uses it to fire giant laser beams at you. What 
the hell was that? Unfortunately, you're about to go from what the hell was that to what the hell is this? Yes, after you kill your man, you can get your hands on the Sword of Eden for yourself, right when it's least useful, immediately after you've completed the game. Worse still, after the events of the final confrontation, it's broken now and has lost all of its magical powers. Yes, it's still technically the strongest weapon in the game in terms of stats, but without its gigantic laser attacks, it's nowhere near as good or cool as it was. Speaking of nowhere near as good or cool as it was, I'm going back to play Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Pyramid Head from Silent Hill 2 is one of gaming's scariest and most iconic enemies for a number of reasons. One of which is that he has a pyramid for a head. And that's just not right. A close second, however, is the fact that he is armed with a giant blade. Actually, a colossal half of a pair of scissors, which the game refers to as the Great Knife, and which is powerful enough to kill your character, James Sunderland, in a single hit. Imagine what he could do with a full pair of scissors. Therefore, curious Silent Hill 2 players who like to explore might be excited to stumble across Pyramid Head's signature weapon just lying on a table in a side room while exploring the labyrinth. Like he set it down to go to the bathroom, then forgot about it. Sadly for you, the Great Knife kind of sucks, because Pyramid Head is an impossibly strong psychic manifestation made flesh, and you are a guy who looks like he probably gets winded getting out of a chair. This is a problem, because the Great Knife is so massive, even Pyramid Head has to drag it behind him when moving, and it's much worse for you, reducing your speed to the point where you'd be overtaken by passing sloths if anything so whimsical were allowed to happen in the grim psychosexual world of Silent Hill. Which it isn't. Actually swinging the knife is even slower and takes such monumental effort that whatever you're trying to hit will have got bored and wandered off by the time you actually would have connected. Great knife? I think this counts as fraudulent advertising. It's not great. It's not even a knife. I suggest bad scissor. Silverhand's iron. You had it. What? You a fan too? Smasher give it to you? Uh-huh. Reward for a special job well done. Now, Johnny Silverhand isn't technically a boss in Cyberpunk 2077, but he is an extremely powerful character, revered as a legend in Night City, and is played by the world's greatest guy, Keanu Reeves. So I think I'm justified in saying that it's total bullshit how badly his gun gets nerfed when you finally get your corpo bashing hands on it. In the course of playing Cyberpunk 2077, you get a few opportunities to play as Johnny Silverhand during flashbacks and memory sequences, in which, as well as lots more scenes of Johnny being a surly jerk, interesting choice there, CD Projekt Red, we also get to see what Johnny is like in a fight. What he's like is a total effing beast, because Johnny is armed with the Malorian Arms 3516 pistol, a ridiculously powerful handgun that does huge damage, shoots through walls, has a melee attack that sets people on fire, and has a charge attack that literally disintegrates people. It is easily the coolest and best weapon you'll have used in the game up to this point, and the mission in which you casually destroy a building full of Arasaka guards using it is a wild power trip of gun cutter and exploding heads. If you're keen to experience similar overpoweredness with the game's actual main character, V, then prepare for disappointment, because you can find Johnny Silverhand's gun in the game, and bad news, it's a bit rubbish. The gun is acquired during the side mission, Chipping In, where it is looted from the body of Grayson, the leader of a group of Maelstrom gangsters. Not yours, I don't think. While the gun looks the same and can still shoot through walls and set people on fire, its damage stats are pathetic compared to the suite of legendary weapons most players will have acquired by this point in the game. Its crit stats are also terrible, and it requires a huge investment in mods and upgrades if you want to be even denting the sort of enemies you'll be facing at the end of the game. I'm gonna make you What's the explanation for this? Because the flashbacks are from Johnny's perspective, are we seeing things the way he remembers them because he thinks he's a total badass? Yeah. Ha! 
talking to me? Or is it that the flashbacks in which Johnny is using the gun were some 50 years before the events of Cyberpunk 2077? So your weapons and your enemy's armor technology have got a lot better in the intervening years? I don't know, but what I do know is that if you want a real Johnny Silverhand artifact worth acquiring, go for his pants. Those things never go out of style. One of Dark Souls 3's most impressive and formidable bosses is the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Doesn't look like any dance I've ever seen, except maybe during the last hour of a wedding. What you can't argue with though is how cool the dancer's twin blades look. They're a pair of curved swords, one of which will hit you with fire damage, the other of which dishes out dark damage. Plus, they're about twice as tall as you are. Were. Twice as tall as you were. Manage to defeat the Dancer of the Boreal Valley and you'll claim her soul, which can then be transposed into the Dancer's Enchanted Swords. Yes, they're a pair of twin blades enchanted with fire and dark magic, but they are considerably less impressive, looking more like a pair of off-brand toy lightsabers. Which we would be fine with, did they not also absolutely suck as weapons? They're slow, weak, don't scale as well as other weapons, and because enemy resistances stack, if you use them against the wrong enemy, they can lose up to 60% of their already limited effectiveness. And that's on top of my already limited effectiveness. The end result is a pair of weapons that will take an absolute age to kill even pretty low level enemies, and we can't imagine a scenario in which you'd ever use them in preference to the hundreds of other better weapons in the game. Although, they're orange and purple, so they might be of some use if you're really into both Dark Souls and basketball team the Phoenix Suns. Praise the Suns! See? Totally works. Tell me about these robots. They roam the Commonwealth and claim to be restoring order. We've seen them fighting raiders, but they've also attacked innocents, settlers, merchants, and caravans like ours. We knew we ran the risk of encountering more of these hostile robots if we stayed in the Commonwealth. If only we had made the decision to leave. There are so many ways to die in the Commonwealth wasteland of Fallout 4. Death claws? Super mutants? No! Getting trapped in a death maze inside a theme park dedicated to a soft drink? And she's off! Let's hope our latest train can draw a little inspiration from our previous <laughs> It's a dangerous place, is what I'm saying. And one persistent danger you'll run into time and time again is Assaultrons, deadly humanoid robots that can absolutely shred you at close range thanks to their terrible claws and roast you at a distance thanks to their powerful lasers. When the laser options available to you, the sole survivor of Vault 111, are generally puny offerings like the crappy laser musket, you might find yourself longing for the kind of firepower available to an Assaultron. But be careful what you wish for, because while it totally works for them, it's a different story when you try it. This is the salvaged Assaultron Head, a unique laser weapon added in the Fallout 4 Automatron DLC, which is an Assaultron Head converted into a handheld laser gun. It does an okay amount of damage, but it needs to be charged before firing, up to five times if you want it to hit as hard as you no doubt need it to. The biggest drawback of this weapon, however, is the fact that it is apparently powered by a dangerously unstable nuclear reactor that is just leaking radiation all over the place. Because every single time you fire it, you, the player, receive 50 points of radiation damage, making it the only energy weapon in the game that directly injures the person using it, as well as their target. Damn, Assaultron, what did I ever do to you? Oh, removed your head and used it as a laser gun. Right.
fans of Devil May Cry will doubtless remember Virgil, twin brother to series main character Dante, and the stylish, usually evil Yin to Dante's wild, impulsive Yang. <laughs> Virgil is a preposterously powerful character throughout the Devil May Cry series and your opponent in several tough-as-nails boss fights, and it's clear that a lot of his deadly power comes from his signature weapon, a dark-forged katana known as the Yamato. So, this is what they call a heartwarming family reunion, eh? You got that right. This thing is an absolute beast. Even its scabbard is deadlier than most swords. Wow, what an amazing weapon, you're probably thinking. I hope someday Dante gets to use it so I can experience its incredible power firsthand. But prepare for disappointment, because Dante does get the Yamato in Devil May Cry 4, and guess what? It kind of sucks. <coughs> The Yamato gives Dante access to a new combat style, Virgil's signature Dark Slayer style. Although it is considerably more limited, with fewer moves and less impressive combos, than what we see Virgil being able to do with the same equipment. To make things worse, the Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition gave us sequences with a playable Virgil where we get to use the Yamato, and have access to almost all the moves and abilities that he had as a boss. I guess the point is supposed to be that the Yamato is Virgil's signature weapon that he's trained with since birth, and as such, he's much better at using it than Dante, who's just picked it up off of the ground, and whose usual fighting style involves shooting people in the face with guns at every opportunity. But still, Virgil's using it to cut holes in reality. Why can't I do that? Maybe I could make a portal to a reality in which this sword doesn't suck. You get it back? That's one sword. So those were seven boss weapons that were cool when the boss had them, but then I got them and they were bad. And it, I guess due to my lack of confidence, I've been told, but I feel like it should be the same. And just, cause, just because Virgil has trained with the Yamato since birth, and I haven't, I should be as good with it as him. All right, wrap it up, unconfident Andy. How do you even train with a sword from birth? How does a baby hold a sword? Confidently. Good. If a baby's coming at you with the Yamato, I'd be like, or I fancy my chances, I reckon. <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, watch some more videos. <laughs> here's one from us. And here's one from Outside Extra. Luke, what one do you want down here? Uh, I want the one about WTF enemies that wandered in from a different genre. Well, it's a different one. I'm changing it because of your rudeness. <laughs> Bad luck. Hey.